Hello and welcome to episode 7 of series 4 of Master League Story Mode. Now today's episode marks a slight change for the channel. This is something I'm going to be trialling this week. This might not work. I might be pushing myself too far. But what I'm going to try and do is move from two roughly sort of 25 to 30 minute episodes a week, which is what we've been doing recently. And I'm going to try and split that up into four mm, 10 to 15 minute episodes a week. So that means you'll have an episode every other day. So today is Monday, you'll have Master League Story Mode. And then Wednesday, be with uh, back with Gabby for Become a Legend. And then Friday, which was Become a Legend Day, that will now become Master League Story Mode Day. And then it'll be Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. That'll be uh, back to Become a Legend. So if it works, I mean, my thought process behind this is uh, more videos more regularly. That's, that's good, isn't it? I would have thought. Uh, and for me, I was realizing actually... You know, a lot of the videos recently have been 30 minutes plus. That's quite a lot of time. It's a big investment. I don't often have that much time available in my day to watch a YouTube video, however much I love the content creator. Uh, so um, hopefully it helps you guys out. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. We're going to try it this week. Uh, I'm going to do my damnedest to get this to work. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. We'll have to go back to the same schedule. I'm sorry about that. But let me know what you think in the comments. Now, in the last episode, well, we played three games and we uh, won one, drew one, won one, which we did in the episode before that. Only two games today, but it does mean with the uh, two episodes a week, there's going to be four Master League games played per week. So that's an extra Master League game per week, so we can get through things a bit quicker, which is good. Uh, let's see who we're playing in the two games today. Well, we have Borgon Bress, and they are in 20th in the league. They've only won one game this season. They've lost eight. They look to be pretty poor. And then uh, it's away at Chateau. Uh, they're in 12th. They've won five. They're slightly better. The first game, well, hopefully we can uh, continue the good form from the end of the last episode and uh, get another get another three points under the belt of Kareem Diakra, who is having a decent time this season. Uh, having finished mid-table last season, um, obviously the, the chairman wants us to get promoted. It's a pretty big shout from him. We're top of the goal rankings with uh, Ferrobori Dori, and we're seventh in the league on 24 points. Let's go and take a look at the sides for today's game. So how are we all doing? Everyone looking pretty good here. Dooleen, the rock of the beast of a unit tank fridge at the back. He's on a blue. Lovely stuff, as is Dory and Frankie Frank Frank Honorat. He's got a few goals recently, which is good to see. There's been a lot of talk in the comments about Olivier and Cham. I've been bad-mouthing Nchin quite heavily. Uh, although he's an excellent player, he's up to 75 rated. Now he's our best player, great dribbler, good pass of the ball. His finishing is poor. And uh, I like an attacking midfielder who can score goals, and he's definitely not provided that so far yet to uh, rustle the onion bag, as is the expression. But uh, I think there's more to come from. He does have knuckle shot and long ranger. It's just he's got 64 finishing, which means it doesn't necessarily go on target. Maybe we need to uh, let off some long rangers if we can. Everyone's looking good. The Don, who uh, kept us in the last game massively, bagged us that three points with an incredible save at the death. He's been excellent. Quick look at Morgan Bress. Uh, 60s all round. Not a single player in the 70s. In terms of rating, we are a class above this side. And at 68 team spirit now, this is a game we should definitely be winning. Come on then. So there are two myths about female managers that Corinne Diacra has absolutely dispelled already this season. First of all, that a woman could never motivate, motivate a team of men. Well, she's proved that's not the case. She's got that team spirit rocketing already. And secondly, she's proved that she's more than just a publicity stunt. Yep, we are well in the mix coming into halfway through the season, and uh, if we can continue the great form we've shown, we're going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. So, uh, yeah, Kareem Diakra blazing a trail for women managers, and I'm a big fan of that. Fojo, down the line into Honorat. Get there ahead of his man. Very confident there. Inside to Dory. He'll get a shot. Scuffs it into the gloves of Nesta, and he gets the first touch on the ball. Oh, Honorat, great tackle. And then side to Encham. Lovely footwork. Back to Honorat. Holds it up. Waiting for Olivier Encham. He's got Nem and Dory to him throwing the box. Ball in. It's Wellington Nem at the far post. Probably want to be looking for big Ferrobori, but hey, fine. Here come Borg on breast now with Kramer. Honorat doing well to get back, but they find their way out into Hogas. That's a lovely ball. And now kraman has got a bit of space to put a ball in. Dooling's come across. Holds him up well. That's great footwork, though. And this is dangerous here, and that's not a good ball. Morgan Bress with some lovely passing here. Oh, Dooling couldn't get that away in the shot. First shot of the game comes in from a man with an impressive chin. But he uh, couldn't challenge Bernardoni's goal. Their passing has been crisp. 
It's been accurate. That's some great... Oh, it fell to him fortuitously. Just flashed it wide. Warning signs there for Claremont. Home side will not want to go a goal down. Bernardoni throws it long to Wellington Nem. He's got the uh, on-running Saavedra. No one there. Wellington Nem decides to stay back. And Cham gets it into Honorat. He'll turn away. Good work from Frank Honorat now. Slip it into Dory. Low ball in. And Cham at the far post wasn't going to get there. Not the best cross. We still yet to uh, really trouble Nesta in the uh, Borgon Brest goal. Fojo into and Cham. Lovely layoff into Doolin. And now Dory. Little chip ball into the path of Wellington Nem. Tries to get it back. There's been some great defending from this Borgon Brest side. They've made things very difficult for us. And that is half time here. Well, Clermont have uh, struggled really to work anything. Borgon Brest had a couple of good efforts as well, and they've had more possession. I feel like we've had the more exciting attacking play. They've been defending stoutly, and uh, yeah, nothing really happening at the moment. We need more in the second half. They've clearly come here to frustrate us. 20th in the league, uh, only one win this season, but we can't be allowing this. We simply cannot be allowing it. Come on. Doolin, big challenge. Oh, and he somehow snuck his way in there. And now he can push it into Ferrobori Dory. He's been so good in these one-on-one -on -one situations. Somehow he's made his way out of this. Can he keep hold of it? Oh, couldn't quite get it to Honorat. And they clear to touch. Couldn't quite get through on goal. Didn't quite have the legs. Did well to work it back, though. Masawema out to Fojo. Oh, lovely ball there from Doolin. And now Honorat will find Fojo. Out on this right-hand side. Ball in, looking for Dory. The glancing header. It's pushed over the bar. Dory in such great form. What is that? Lovely little dance from the keeper there. He's feeling the funk today. And, uh, well, he would have been in some funk had he let that one in. Because it was a looping header with not much power. He made a meal of that. First corner of the game. It's Flojo over this one. Just to uh, put in the in-swinger. And Cham's there with the... Olivier... Olivier. Olivier. Doolin headers away, but not far enough. Ball into the centre. It's back heeled in. Fontaine will win it. And that is not a good ball into Nem. He puts a little flick into uh, Dory. And now we can move forward with Olivier and Cham. Dory battling in the centre. Can we find him? We can. Now and Cham back into Dory with the right foot. Kurt comes across with an important intervention. Lovely interplay there between the attacking midfielder and the striker. Just little passes, laying it off. One, two, little bit of this, little bit of that. Kurt was there. Dory, though, he's starting to uh, starting to probe now. Honorat shows for it short here. Bojo gives it off. Edge of the box into Encham. Lovely first touch from him. Out of his feet. Shot is blocked. Oh, it falls to Encham, though. Can't get the shot away. Nem now into the box. Oh, just waited there too long. Doolin, such a big tackle there from the big man. Can he slip a ball into Dory? It's well weighted. Dory battles. Ferrobori, Dory. That is centre forward play of the highest calibre. He didn't give up there. He's such a pain to play against. He must be an absolute nightmare for defences. And 69 minutes in. Well, he had absolutely no right to be scoring there. Great work from Doolin as well. Such a strong player in the middle. And then that's pushed in. And then Dory pushes in. And Kurt, who saved the goal a few moments before, is embarrassed by the big man. The big man on campus. It's a hopeful ball from Doolin. And Kurt had that covered all day. He saw him coming. But that's a cool finish from Dory from a very tight angle in off the post. And his goal scoring route continues. Can Brest uh, fight their way back into this one? They've looked decent. They've definitely not looked like the 20th team in the league. Busa, he's looked good. Oh, Saavedra, big challenge. And then he finds Honorat now. Bit of space to run into in the middle of the pitch. He's got, only got Dory ahead of him. Strong running now. Has to go back. Slips it into Doolin, who's made a great run. Doolin tries to find him again, but it's going to fall to Dory. He pokes it in to Wellington. Nem, the ball across would have been there. Would have been a tap in. For um, Frank Honorat. Oh, good work. Sherry now. Borgon Brest looks to put together an attack for the first time in a long time. And Cham nearly gives away the foul. Keeps battling, though. Busaho keep that in. That's a nice ball into Sherry. He'll go back. D 
Dig Brew now. Can he get the ball in? No, they keep it to feet. That's not a bad ball. And Cham gets the header away. And Dory tracking back. Can't win it. Dangerous here as they make their way into the box. Saar now with the effort. Bernardoni with the save. Saavedra, that's an awful clearance. Back to Gamet. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Saavedra, you would have been much better off letting that go out. What a painful goal that would have been to concede. Saavedra has been so good this season, but this was badly judged. Badly misjudged. And two minutes is up. It's us done here. Masawema now into the substitute. Dujamon takes it out of his feet. Can't get the shot away. Back to Nesta. But that'll be full time here in Clermont Ferrand. And it's another three points. And it's a three points that we really had to work hard for. I think it could have been two or three. We had the better of the chances, although the stats will show. that Borgon Bress had uh, their fair share of possession and their fair share of opportunities as well. But they weren't able to take them. And crucially, right at the end, Saavedra almost handed them a point with one of the worst clearances in the history of football. But luckily, they weren't able to capitalise. And uh, yeah, not bad. Another man of the match performance, obviously, for Ferrobori Dori, who just, just steamrolled Kurt in the defence. And uh, yeah, I think that was Diami. I think that's the Diami we're after signing. Uh, only got a 5.5 for them today. Yeah, good performances all round. Defence didn't have a huge amount to do. But it's a huge three points again at home. Let's keep this winning run going. Come on, boys. So 1-0, but that's all you need. And uh, now we're only two points behind Lons in second place. Who we actually beat as well. So, I mean, they would be even further ahead. It does look to be a race for second place at the moment as uh, Gazelak Ajakio. Answers in the comments. Uh, they've only lost two this season. And they've uh, scored a hell of a lot of goals. They've scored... 14 more goals than we have. And I've, I feel like we've been fairly free scoring at times. But yeah, they are deadly. So it's a nice week off. And then we've got an away trip to uh, Chateauroux. And uh, well, Karim Diacre has been offered a move away to Almeria. I think they might be in the Spanish second division. As we know, this is a journey woman series. So we can move clubs for the first time ever in Master League Story Mode. That doesn't really take my fancy though. I think we're definitely, definitely sticking with Claremont for a while. So scraping a victory, say the press, and I, I feel like I probably have to agree with them there. It was hardly a comprehensive win against a team that we should have been beating pretty pretty solidly. So Chateau today, and then in the next episode, Friday's episode, how exciting is that? We've got Lorient, who are a decent side, but they're languishing in 15th, they're having a poor season. And then we've got top of the table, Ajaccio, away from home as well. And then, on Monday, so only four days later... Three days later, we're into the transfer window. So that's exciting. Um, let's remind ourselves that we've got no money. We've got no real saleable assets. We've got 233,000 euros. <sighs> we've got a few players who have got teams interested. Guebert. I mean, if we look at market value-wise, I guess our most attractive saleable asset is Ndai. Could maybe bag us 700,000? Maybe a little bit more, which would take us up to a heady million euros. But we're not going to be able to buy anything of any real quality with that, are we? Uh, Guebert as well, we're likely to have some offers for. Um, I'm toing and throwing on what sort of what, what player we need to sign. I mean, really the player we need to sign is a centre-back. That is our weakest spot with Fontaine, but he seems to be doing all right. I guess adding any sort of real quality. Another striker would be nice. And we've highlighted, uh, obviously, the freak. Koyalipu. 17-year-old, 86 finishing Koyalipu. Uh, he's the one. He's the one we want. At the moment, zero out of five chances of signing. But he's got a release fee of 1.7 million. I'm just going to see if we can trigger that now. I don't think we will be able to with the five. I mean, with the zero out of five chances of signing doesn't quite work in that way. I think the, the player's still got to want to leave for you to be able to um, trigger that release fee, which is, which is sort of fair enough. That's, that's real life-esque. But other than that, there's no one really who we want to sign. Kalulu would be good. I mean, he's not the finisher, but he's very, very quick. Sonogo I'd really like as well. He's one to look at. Love to get Yair in. We, we should be looking for target men, really, to stick with Kareen's tactics which have worked pretty well so far, but then again, Ferrobori Dori is a freak of nature. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and nothing's really working with the scouts at the moment. We're getting back a lot of players who are either too good for us or are from fake teams, so it's, it's tricky. 
Right, second game. Let's go. Come on. Away from home, yes, but again against a team that we should be beating. Let's see how everyone's looking today. Olivier and Cham. Well, he's on a downward arrow. I think he still starts. Um, did have a comment coming in this week reminding me that we've actually got a decent attacking midfielder in the squad in the shape of Gobert. Um, let's just compare the two. I mean, dribbling-wise, athlete-wise, there's no there's no competition. And Cham is the better player, but... Bears a better finisher. Good from uh, good from set pieces as well. That's interesting to see. And he's strong on the ball. But speed, explosive power, physical contact, all the stuff that Olivier and Cham does so well, uh, Grobert is, is well off the pace. So, I mean, maybe we should look to give him more of a chance off the bench when needed. But I don't know. I don't know. I think we do need to strengthen him in that area. But it's not going to happen in January. Quick look at Chateau. Well, uh, they've got a pretty handy looking centre forward 74 rated and they're playing two defensive midfielders as well so it's going to be a little bit congested and they've got some decent looking defensive players as well and a good keeper this isn't going to be uh, the cakewalk that the last one should have been wasn't but should have been playing in the white today my favorite kit uh, let's uh, let's make this a white wash shall we thank you thank you so a lot of you were asking for uh, well we'd got two wins and a draw in both of the last two episodes a lot of you were saying you need the three wins in a row now and I agree we need to get we need to get the momentum just really nicely flowing. And uh, drop points, especially in some of the easier games, that's that's not what we want to see. So these are the games we need to be winning. On the on the run up to two difficult games in the next episode, uh, it needs to be two wins out of two today. Sa tracked by and Cham. Does well to turn back inside. Finds Niang. Oh, Masawema couldn't quite get to that one. He's putting the pressure on and he's almost won it back twice. Saavedra can't win it back either. This is dangerous here as Chateau. Let's get a ball into the box. It's a good ball. Good header. Flash wide though. Looked like we won that back about two or three times. But eventually they managed to get a ball into the box. The header though thankfully off target. From Bowen. Early ball in. Zagadu over commits massively. And they get away. It's an easy save for Bernardoni in the end though. Zagadu. It's a little bit rash there. Oh great turn inside from Saar. And he's got it back again. That's a lovely ball into Mandan. Oh, Bernardoni, not a great save. Back into uh, push back into trouble. Almost managed to get it away though. Masawema. Oh, Masawema intercepts really well there. And that's a beautiful chip ball into Wellington Nem. It's going to look to go route one into Ferrobori Dori into the box now. Good footwork from him. Back out to Saavedra. He'll whip a ball in looking for Honorat. It's well blocked though. And then wins that into Masawema. Lovely ball into Encham. Gets away from his man. The left foot shot is blocked. That's good defending there. Good first touch from Olivier Encham. Still looking to open his account. When he does, I think there'll be a public holiday in Clermont because it's well overdue from our what should be our star player. Mandan now bringing it forward. Doolin's back. Gets a challenge in. It's a judge to be a foul. Free kick in a dangerous position here for Chateau, who've uh, shown a good account of themselves so far. It's Niang. Surely this is too far to have a go. He steps over it. Brilliant now goes back. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to shoot from there. Good interplay here. Fontaine misses that one. Ooh! Cheeky effort there from the Chateau player. Almost Chateau my pants as I thought Bernardoni was going to tip that into his own goal. Should be an easy take for Bernardoni. He makes a meal of that one though. That's a good take from Brilliant. Into the box now. He turns! Again, kept us in it that time. Bernardoni on or out into Masawema. That's not what I wanted, but we've got it back anyway. Good ball there from uh, on or out into Encham. Has to go back into Masawema and we'll uh, look to just get a bit of control in this one now. Saavedra. Can you slip it around the corner into Wellington? Nem, he can. Nem takes on his man. Has to go back to Masawema now. He'll put a ball into the box. On or out with the header down. That was a foul there, referee in there. Surely. Oh, Wellington name, great defending. And Saavedra picks it up now. To poke it into his fellow South American Wellington name. He's going to get there. Pokes it around the corner. He had to into Dory there to push it wide. Ball back inside. Dory with the ball in. On a wrap with the header. Always difficult to generate the power needed from a header behind him like that. And it's half time here in Chateau. And uh, yeah, 60% possession for Chateau. They seem to be massively on top in this one. Didn't feel like that in the game, but actually... We've only made 29 passes. 
in the whole first half. We've only had one shot on target. Actually, yeah, things are things are looking a bit dicey here. We're going to need a lot more in this second half. Nice ball inside to Mandan. Fonte misses the tackle. Back to Saar. That's a lovely ball out. Oh, it's blocked by Saavedra, but it's out for another corner here. Chateau looked very dangerous. Got to be careful of Mandan. He looks to be a big, tall centre forward. Zagadou's there. Gets the header away. Edge of the box. Oh, good effort. Bernardoni, great take from him. Now Dooley. Dory back heel into Masawema. Defensive midfielder into the box. It's off the bar. Don't believe it. How did he miss that? Oh, it's still not cleared. Oh, and it is cleared. Damn. Masawema made a great run from the midfield there. Split the defence. He looked to be uh, shooing to score there. Couldn't quite get it on target. Kept out by the bar. Oh, Saavedra's caught out. Danger here. Ben Rama brings it forward. It's a lovely ball into Mandan. Oh, just over here. Fojo will see that out. Saavedra nearly giving up another big mistake there to give them a goal. Didn't quite come off that time, but as in the last game, living on borrowed time then. Dory wins the header, and it's into Fojo now. On a rack. Can he poke a ball into Ferrobori? Dory can poke it into the area anyway. Couldn't quite get there. Strong defending. Balls into the box. Fontaine, good header. Not cleared, though. Not cleared at all. Oh, Saavedra wins it back well. Oh, no. Into the box. Shot comes in. Wow. Bukari puts it just wide. Just couldn't get it away there. I thought Saavedra had it there, but he took a big touch. He's making a few errors, Saavedra, today. I'm not too pleased. Bernardoni long into, on, into uh, Dory. Wins the header. Finds Doolin. He manages to get it away into uh, Honorat now. Back to Enchamp. Plays it into Masawema. Dory into Enchamp. Just about gets there. Now Honorat. Can he whip a ball in? Oh, Wellington Nem was there. The low cross across the goal. We've seen that work. Oh. We had a final chance there, but we didn't do anything with it. We pass back and it's going to be a disappointing draw. I, mean, I say disappointing. We were under the cosh in this game. Chateau came out at us hard. Kept possession all the way through. 43% possession for Clermont. I'm not sure if I've ever been the side that gets that lower percentage of possession in Master League. Definitely not for a long time. And with that in mind, I think we did pretty well to get the point here. I mean, you're going to have to take some points on the road. And Bernardoni, well, that shows, doesn't it? Bernardoni gets man of the match. It just wasn't quite working for us. And Chan was anonymous, as was Wellington Nem. And Dory, yeah, I mean, he came up against some really strong defending today. And it was, it was enough to keep him out anyway. Mandan, their striker, looked dangerous throughout, as we expected he would be. And uh, yeah, we'll take the point. We'll take it. So we just can't quite seem to string together the wins in the way that we need to. But as long as we're not losing, we're keeping the pressure on. I mean, we've had four defeats, four losses, eight wins. I mean, we're, we're on the same sort of form as everyone else. Uh, with four points now behind Nancy Lorraine, who've jumped up into second. Lons, who were there, have jumped down. It can move around so much at the moment. But then equally... We're only three points behind ninth place Harbour. So yeah, it can all change. All change. So the scout is back. Let's see if anything interesting has come from that. Anyone that we could actually maybe even sign. Take a look at that. So a couple of extra South American strikers. Gymnasia de Plata. I think that is a real side. Uh, good finisher. Decent stats all round. 72 rated. Valued at 4.8 million. Plays a second striker, an attacking midfielder at a pinch. Decent passer, which I always like to see in a centre forward. I'll add him to the list for sure. And then Bruto, uh, that is a fake team, which is a shame because he looks to be pretty good. Another attacking midfielder from, uh, oh, another fake one. Yeah, we, this, is, this is happening too much. We're never going with South America again. We're never going with South America again. At least, you know, if you're getting a normal league in, you get real players. And Harmanucci, another fake team. So nothing really with the scouts, although I quite like the look of, uh, what's his name, Ramirez. He's one to keep an eye on. Decent all-round striker, 21 years old, maybe. maybe. Probably be out of our price range anyway. So there we have it. That is the end of today's episode. Yep, after only two games, but remember, we'll be back on Friday. Exciting. So as I said, let me know what you think about the new four episodes a week format. I might not go for it. It might be too much. We'll see how it goes. But if you like it and I like it, then, then we stay with it. We've uh, moved up one place in the league after those two games, but crucially, we're not losing. 
we're just ticking the points over and that's important. I'll see you in a bit.